Hey guys, well this is the uh, the first video for the uh, Simpson Desert uh, Ramble ride that me and Ken are doing. Um, the videos that I'm going to be putting out at the moment are going to be, going to be a bit you know, higgledy-pickledy and all over the place. It's just going to be all the prep that we're doing. Um, at the moment, I don't have Max here. He's, uh, he's down at uh, Elliott Brothers here in Bendigo, um, getting those front uh, fork seals fixed up. I think. No, actually, no, you guys on YouTube don't know unless you're on Facebook. I made a comment in a photo. Um, I found that uh, Max's right uh, front fork was leaking oil, so I've taken that down to Elliot Brothers to uh, get those guys to put new seals in it. So, um, yeah, I'm without Max, and I'm just like, oh my god, so I've got my other bikes here just to, uh, to <laughs> satisfy me. Anyway, um, we're finally going to get to see uh, Ken's blue DR and it changing to the white DR. Alright guys, um, Ken's done a bloody great job with the video. This is the first time he's ever done any of this stuff, so anyway, check him out. Okay, g'day, I'm Ken. Uh, I'm doing the ride with Mark on the uh, Simpson Desert Ramble. Um, this is basically my uh, new Suzuki DR. 650, 650 SE, um, it's a 2007 model, uh, it's done 5,800 Ks, um, this is pretty much how I bought it, uh, I haven't changed anything, um, the I bought it off, uh, modified it, uh, did a few things, he put a BMW bash plate on the, on the bottom here, he's put wider foot pegs on, he has put a sergeant seat on it, which is a great idea, nice and comfy, um, it has an, an OEM um, rear wrap, made from Suzuki, but it's not compatible with the uh, Wolfman uh, panniers. So I'm either going to have to modify the mounts for this, and uh, I need to make it wider anyway. It's, it's too narrow to mount. Uh, mount a tent and uh, bag on the back here, so I'm going to make it a bit wider, or I'll make up a new one completely. Um, has different bars on it, because the original bars on these uh, DRs are very flimsy, and they do bend quite easily. So change the bars, here we get one, just change the bar straight away. Um, this has a double wall bar on it, it's tag, tag bars. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of fat bars, Mark's got a fat bar, so yeah, so um, I'll see how it goes with this. But um, I like fat bars, I've got one with the KTM, it's fantastic, really good. But um, it also has a one inch riser, bar riser on it. So um, that's been done. Has laminar windscreen on it, which is velcroed onto the um, headlights around. So I'll be removing that, putting it on my uh, on a new headlights around, which I have, um, and bolting it on instead of velcroing it. Velcro, and it needs to tilt out a bit too, just a tad. Now all blue. Um, get rid of the blue, um, but it makes it. Uh, we'll, you know, we've seen rivalry for years. Um, I could go on about orange the KDMs. They could go on about the. Uh, the WRs and YZFs, so I just can't have a, I'm not allowed to have a blue bike, so it's got to be white, so I'm changing it to white, so, um, and um, yeah, so I've got all new plastics, basically, oh sorry, second hand plastics, they're all really good Nick. <laughs> these are them, uh, fantastic condition, uh, I can pay 120 bucks for uh, the whole lot, front, headlights around, front guard and the rear guard, so that's cheap. Um, the exhaust is coming up because the exhaust, I'm not sure how much they weigh, but they're huge and there's a lot of weight in them and they don't sound any good. <laughs> so that exhaust is coming off and this uh, PowerCore 4 FMF exhaust uh, is going on, so it's basically a lot smaller, there's not much in it and it's not much weight in it either. So, so they're a bit louder than the Q4 exhaust, they make a Q4 exhaust, <coughs> this one's a bit louder. Um, I had one of these on my used to have a DR Z400 and that had a power core 4 exhaust on it and it was fantastic. I had no problems with it so I just took something I'm used to and I know. So that's going on. Um, this is the Safari Tank. Um, unlike Mark, I've got the, uh, the um, transparent tank so I'll actually know how much fuel is in my tank without having to put a stick on it. So it's one thing I'll be watching Mark to do. You'll be, uh, I'll catch him, he'll be walking around and pick a stick up and stick it in his tank to see how much fuel he's got in there. Because dark tanks you can't see him doing 
he's sloshing around, but he's still out there. So uh, we're watching, and he'll be watching this. He'll be just filling his at the same time, and as mine goes down, he'll be just checking to make sure his is very similar. Um, basically, um, same panniers as Mark put on. These are the um, Wolfman Generation 2 panniers. They'll just fit between here and here. Pick up these spots. Uh, I've got the, um, the exhibition bags to go with it, so they'll be going on as well. Um, yeah, and what else? Um, oh, I've got a HID headlight kit. Forgot about that. Over here. There's one thing Mark doesn't have. He hasn't got it yet. So, well, I didn't keep the secret either, he knows I've got it. <laughs> Basically, uh, the Zen light for the uh, front headlight. You keep the existing headlight, you just basically take the globe out, and this is just a plug and play. Plate plugs into the existing harness. You have a ballast here, which has got to be mounted on the front there somewhere. And then basically a headlight plugs in, a new headlight, and a globe that goes into the existing um, a reflector. So that'll be going on. And um, and because Mark's is original, um, we'll put the bikes together and we'll, um, we'll line them up one night and we'll have a look at the difference. And uh, mind you, he's got his um, little, he's got his spot, which um, as you saw, it looks fantastic too. It looks like it's uh, extremely bright. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll compare all them and um, see what the difference is. So that's that's another thing. Uh, Eddie grips. I wait for Mark to put his grips on so I know how to do it. Because <laughs> there's like a bit of mucking around. Um, comes with heat tricks in it. But uh, apparently the heat tricks don't trick up enough to hold them around the bar. Um, I was going to use quick grip. Just put quick grip around it, put the, the, the grip around, and then just uh, probably tape it up, put some more quick grip on, and put, the, put the new uh, bars on, and the new um, grips on, and then just wire them up. Yeah, so there we go. See so yeah, Marco. We'll be watching you. Ta da! All done. This is it. All now down to white. It's much better. I'm not happy with it, really happy. Um, looks fantastic. Um, looks like it's ready for the bush now. So, um, yeah, so it all went well. Um, tank was easy to put on. Um, I didn't get as much stuff out as the uh, crap out of it as uh, Mark did. Just got a few bits of plastic, but um, nothing major. Uh, the exhaust, that was easy to put on. Um, yeah, no issues there. Uh, the panniers um, were easy. Uh, I kept the rear rack and ended up putting a new one on, or, or making one. Um, it basically fitted alright, so I just need longer bolts. Put a few shims here and there. But uh, basically it's all uh, good as gold. Uh, strong as. Um, yeah, so apart from that, um, yeah, everything else is on. So I'll show you around, I'll show you around the bike. Um, basically, um, I put a GPS on, uh, which is all 100% waterproof. So I'll have the... Um, Aussie Explorer software on there with the Hemmer maps, so that's what um, the useful driving and all that sort of stuff, so um, they're just, yeah, good maps. Um, got all the uh, heated grips on. Um, I did it similar to Mark, but I actually used the uh, heat shrinks that came with the, the grips um, in, a, in a, um, a heat gun. Heat gun shrunk them down pretty good. Um, they don't move. Um, I wired them on anyway, just in case. There's a couple of wires on there. Um, the mirrors, with some um, DRC mirrors, which are um, a lot lighter than the originals, plus we can sort of, I can push them out of the way, so, so it saves them breaking in the scene. The other ones are rigid, the, the original ones, and they'll just snap off, so these we can, a little bit more flexible. So we'll see how they go. Um, put the screen on, so, um, screen's all good. Um, yeah, so it all stick it up. Um, similar to Mark. Mark sent me some pics so I can uh, do it very similar to his. So, um, yeah, so basically uh, Rex is looking good. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll show you around the bike. Check this out. I can see how much petrol I've got here, Mark. See that? See? Look at that. 
Oh, I need a dipstick. <laughs> feel like a bit more. Feel a bit like one, though. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, cool. Right up. Oh, and did I mention this pannier? Um, that's probably not a pannier. Um, a Wolfen bag. Basically, came off the uh, front. Goes across the front headlight. It's sort of an all-purpose bag. It's got lots of straps on it, and it pretty much fits anywhere. So, um, I was going to put it on the front of the screen here, um, around here. But um, she just would have been, uh, would have scratched up all the plastic and everything on that. So basically I've, um, I've mounted it on the tank. I wasn't going to put a tank bag on it, but this is quite neat and small. It'll only have my phone in it. So I'll just run, put my phone in there so I can be charged. Um, and, uh, the good old bag of lollies, you know, the old glue case. Got to have the old glue case. So the bag of lollies has been there and that's pretty much about it. So. Um, I can stand up on the bike easy enough, this doesn't get in the way, it's quite solid. So um, yeah, it should be good. Okay, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update. Last, the last ride myself and Mark went on at uh, Myrtleford, up in Abbey Yard. Uh, we, I had a bit of a prang in the car, as you saw on the video. car's been repaired, uh, they did a great job of it. But uh, the other day, if you can come over here and have a look up there. I climbed up on the side of the car and um, to grab that swag down, and I uh, got it down all right. But when I put it back up, I knocked the, uh, that esky, and it fell off there, down, and it hit the corner of the car, and put a nice little uh, bubble in it. But um, all I got to do is take off the uh, take off the inner guard, or just undo the inner guard, just so I can get in underneath, pop it back out, and um, it should uh, should come back out. No worries. But uh, what a shame. Hey, you dickhead. <laughs> I don't tell you. Yeah, but anyway, shit happens, eh? But anyway, uh, they did a great job of the uh, car. And uh, fantastic. And uh, as you can see, my dog Sam sitting in the front, aren't you, hey? You want to go for a drive somewhere, don't you? He likes to go for a spin. I might have, uh, might have trouble getting him out now. Probably have to take him for a spin around the block before he'll get out. Uh, uh, so that's it, all done. So the car's uh, back to normal, or will be back to normal, 100%. Once I get around to doing it. Um, that crane that was on the back of the tray, I had a tray. I don't know if you noticed, but it had a little high crane thing on the back of it. Um, I ended up getting rid of that. That sold that with the tray. Um, I have to build a uh, another tray for the back here to take this camper. So that was always going to happen, but um, yeah, the idea is uh, just build a tray and... Uh, I throw the bikes on or whatever and go riding with the bikes and all that, but uh, yeah, so it's all good, all back to normal. Uh, another thing I did before I put the Safari tank on is I changed the spark plugs. Um, I put an NGK CR9s in, which is slightly hotter than the original 10s that were in there. I checked the forums, they didn't seem to think it'd make any difference, there's a few fellas running the 9s. So I put them in, um, and it made a big difference as far as idling, starting it up and idling. Um, I had trouble, um, it just took a long time to warm up when it had the standard exhaust on. So I don't know if it's exhaust all the plates that made the difference, but uh, anyway, I'll show you. Um, basically, half choke. Start her up. So the exhaust isn't that loud, on the side, which is good. I didn't want it too loud. So there's a Q9 exhaust, which is a bit quieter, but the uh, power core 4 is fine. So, um, yeah, so basically, um, I'll take it for a spin for the next day or two. I'll head out to El Dorado. There's a, uh, out in the bush, uh, gravelly the road, but I don't have Nobby Tyre on the front yet. But um, I'm sure she'll be fine. But basically, I'll, put, uh, I'll fill the tank right up, put uh, 30 litres in it, and we'll just go for a ride and um, see how the front end and everything goes. And we'll see if we need to do anything anything more suspension wise then. So, until then, yeah, keep on riding. Well, there you go, guys. So, that's uh, Ken's DR650 Rex. I tell you what, it's bloody come up a real treat. Um, that white looks really, really good. So, um, and I think it's going to be. Um, 
like with the with the black DR and the white DR, with the footage that we get uh, when we take, when we go off on the on the trip, um, is uh, going to look pretty good. And with Ken's new video skills, um, hopefully we can uh, bring you guys along on the ride and do a good bloody job of it. Anyway, so that's the first of the uh, the DR6. No, it's not the DR6. I'm so used to saying the DR650. Um, first of the Simpson Desert Ramble ride um, videos, and uh, we'll bring some more of the uh, the prep stuff. We'll obviously, I've still got to put on a. I'm getting a stain tune. And that's another thing you guys mightn't have known that I found the problem with the bloody DR. But I'll do all that in the next video. But I've got a new stain tune um, exhaust coming for Max. And we now know what tyres that we're getting from Bridgestone, which is uh, coming through Elliott Brothers. And uh, so in the next one, we'll, we'll run through all those types of things. And then it's all the stuff that we're taking and how we're packing it on the, on the bikes and stuff like that. All right, guys, as usual, keep on riding.